Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here to talk about <laughs> car detailing. You're like, what? What does that have to do with the Lord? I will tell you. Have you ever gotten walked up to a beautiful car? I mean sparkling. A Lincoln Town car. You know, whatever your favorite is. A Buick, uh, LaCrosse, whatever. Whatever your favorite is. You're looking at this, oh, a Lamborghini, hey, hey. Yeah, and you are just blown away by the, by the, the designer, the, 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 uh, the design, the craftsmanship, the, oh my goodness, this thing is just a work of art. And you just can't stop feasting your eyes on this thing of beauty. Then somebody opens the door. Now you're looking at it. It's all nicely vacuumed and manicured. Everything's looking good. Until you get in that car and you close the door and it's like, whoa, 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 what is that? Well, you know what it is. It's the stench of cigar smoke, ashes, and burnt cigarette smoke. Nasty. That is a nasty smell. Sometimes a car can smell so bad it can actually smell as bad as an ashtray itself. And no matter how long they leave the doors open, they just can't, as soon as they close it up for a minute, all those smells, oh, you know why? Because whoever keeps driving that car keeps smoking in it. So I don't care how many times they have it clean, polished, and prettied up, because they keep smoking in it, it keeps stinking. And no matter how beautiful, spotless, and shiny it is, it smells dirty. Hmm. Think about that. What do you keep doing in your life that keeps bringing the smell back? That keeps reigniting the sins that you're so vigilantly trying to get rid of? When the Bible says make no provisions for the flesh, a person who's trying to stop drinking cannot afford to hang out at the bar, cannot afford to hang out with drinking friends while they're drinking, cannot afford to keep visiting your ex-girlfriend when you're trying to live a celibate life. Think about this now, because all it's going to do is continue to reignite, and you're going to keep smoking and smoking and smoking that same old sin again. And the stench of sin will never leave your life. The stains of sin will never leave you, because you keep making provisions for it, buddy. You can't keep doing that now. I'm telling you the truth. It may sound kind of cold, but it's the truth. When people talk about, oh, I stopped smoking. And after a while, you start noticing the smell of smoke is getting weaker and weaker. It takes time for that smell to go away. I, I'm an ex-smoker, I know. Okay. And what ends up happening is as time goes by, you really have stopped smoking. Even your house loses the smell because you've cleaned, you've refreshed, you've done everything. Plus, you're not bringing it back in. So it does begin to die down. However, all you need to do is smoke one day, and it seems to reignite all those old odors again. And your old habitual desires. You cannot make provisions for the flesh. Do you hear me? Now, you're in this beautiful Lamborghini or this beautiful town car. Whatever it is you want to say is your favorite car. And it smells. Oh, it smells horrible. Well, now if it changes ownership and that owner does not smoke, they're going to have the whole interior detail. They're going to have the upholstery, the leather, the the carpentry, I mean, everything, the, the, the upper lining on the above their heads, everything that has any kind of fabric whatsoever, they're going to have that baby cleaned out like a whistle. And they're going to have it fumigated and have all this beautiful air freshener put in. 
And if they're not smoking, that car, after a while, will begin to smell as beautiful as it looks. But the new owner had to clean it from within. Now, it's already being cleaned outside. So this is what happens when you're going to church and let's say you, you dress to the nines and you know your scriptures and you know your praise songs and you know just when to say, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. And you know how to do your little, you know, church dance, whatever it is you do to express your love, worship and, rem and reverence to the Lord. But when people get to know you, my question to you is, what are they smelling when they're around you? What do you exude? Do you exude love, peace, holiness, righteousness, genuine sincerity, kindness, mercy? Do you exude that total mutual respect? Love for God and man? Or do you exude attitude and my way or the highway? Or as far as I'm concerned, you can jump off the lake, buddy, because eh, eh, I'm done with you. Or I will never forgive you. Or that pastor can't preach worth a fart. Well, I'm spending my money up. I ain't giving him none of my money. What are you exuding? Are you drawn, or no, let's say it like this. Do Christians like being around you, or do you draw more of the company of sinners because they can relate to you better? What do you draw? Butterflies or garbage flies? I guess it depends on how you're smelling now, doesn't it? How are you smelling? What do you smell like? Think about it.